you from across the room. Hey everyone, it's Melissa Morrow from Vintage B Design and Rave Home Staging, and today I'm going to be working on some metal projects. These are all pieces that were either thrifted, given to us, or they're items that haven't sold in our shop, and we are going to redo them so we can have a new opportunity to sell them. For each of these projects, I have multiples of the same item in different sizes. While you may not be able to get these exact same containers, this one in particular, these white containers, um, you can get those pretty much at the Dollar Tree. They'll work. These could easily be the cookie tins. Um, basically what I'm doing here is I have picked a black paint. We sell a lot of different paint lines, so really the kind of paint I'm using here is irrelevant. You'll want to cover this with black paint and you're going to need to give it two good coats. After you've painted all of the tops and the sides, you're going to want to go ahead and let it dry completely and then you're going to paint the top of the lids as well. So we're actually going to use these as risers basically, but we do need to make sure because you can see this from the underside that we completely paint the top. The next step will be to give everything a nice sanding. I use a 220 grit sandpaper and because this had a texture on the original material, you're actually seeing some of the white flecks come through. It had a little bit of a grainy chippiness to it, which I really like and I think is very nice for this project. If you don't have that, it doesn't really matter. Be sure that you've removed all stickers and any tags. In this case, I'm using a hot glue gun and you can just see it lift right up off the tin and then a razor blade scrapes it right off. It's super easy. Next, I wanna add a satin finish. So what I'm doing is adding some of the same black paint I used earlier and mixing it into my satin finish. And the reason I'm doing this is because satin tends to streak on dark colors. So this is a good tip when you wanna put a higher gloss coat where you might tend to see brush strokes or be able to see some streaking in it. If you add no more than 10% of the paint to that satin finish, then you will have no streaking whatsoever. Next up, I have a variety of candlesticks. Some were thrifted and these wooden ones here, my husband actually turned for me. He's still learning wood turning and so these are really sample pieces. Most of them have some defect to them that wouldn't make them ideal candidates for full candlesticks, but they are great as an ancillary to another project. If you enjoy DIY, I would love for you to join Creating the Hive, which is a new Facebook group that I have created. And this is gonna be true, especially if you are someone who is in the industry of creative. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of marketing business. One of the things that I am known for is my marketing skills within my staging community. I'm gonna bring some of that to the arts and crafts community through the group Creating the Hive. This is also a great place for you to share your videos. You are a small creator and you create videos on YouTube and you're looking for another place to get additional viewers that you may not have access to. Please join the group and feel free to post your videos within the group. Now I'm gonna stamp my tins, but of course my stamp pad is at the other house. I will be using my Sweet Tea Decor Stamps from Prima, and I have poured out some ink on, you could use paint as well, but I've poured out some ink on this little glass plate and I'm just painting it onto my letters. Once I feel like I've got that well saturated, I'm gonna go ahead and just carefully place it on my piece. Because this is a rounded object, it is a little tricky. You wanna be sure that you do not move your stamp once you have it placed. So start in the middle and roll it out and then carefully use your fingers to press down and sort of massage it gently and then lift it off as carefully as you can. I sort of let the edges flop up because they naturally wanted to do that and then pulled it up from the center. Saw you from across the room When our eyes met I never knew That I could feel this way And it's kind of strange Don't even know your name I'm out 
I really like how they came out, but I think they're still a little boring. So I've decided that I have this shelf liner from my kitchen. Um, you'll notice I'm still painting here. I just haven't had any time to finish. But this is the liner that I'm using on my shelf drawer and I have some leftover. So I am going to add it to them on the inside. So I think when they're just sitting there, it gives them a little bit more interest as you can see. So anyway, let's go ahead and do that. in here as easily as possible. If you sort of uh, round it from the middle and put the middle down, then you'll be able to work your way to the outside and get out most of the bubbles. It does help to have a credit card or something that you can sort of squish the bubbles on out. If you run into a problem where you can't get a bubble out in the middle, you can take a pin, a very fine like a needle, and poke it and the air will actually come out of that. So I really enjoyed playing with the stamps on this project, but I'm wondering if maybe I should have left them off. I don't know. What do you think? Did you like them before I added the stamps or after I added the stamps? Leave a comment below. I don't know you, but I want to get to know you. Just want to get to know you. I don't know you, but I want to get to know you. Just want to get to know For this project, I am going to be using DIY Paint White Swan, and I was painting kitchen cabinets at the other house and left my Klingons there. So today I'm going to be using a blue ice brush. Ice, ice, baby. And I do like these brushes. I just unfortunately have to clean them immediately following, um, which is one of the main reasons I love my Klingons is that I don't have to clean them. Anyway, I am just gonna kind of put this on. You'll see it, this brush, despite being um, a very thin brush, has really good coverage. It actually will hold a lot of paint despite the fact that it is very thin. It is about, I'm gonna say this is an inch and a half, two inches wide. Um, and it's interesting because it kind of has sawtooth teeth at the end of the bristles. And that does create a little bit of texture in your paint, which I really like. And since I'm doing decoupage and I need some grip on there, DIY paint and this little sawtooth is actually the perfect combination to give me a nice grip for the medium that I'll be adding for the decoupage paper. And while this does have a hanger on the back and I am, don't plan on decoupaging the back, I am going to paint it because I feel like it is going to give me a more finished look. I'm also going to paint the top of the container, the lid. I will be using one of Jamie Ray Vintage's um, decoupage papers. I love this one. This is probably my favorite of all of the decoupage papers. And basically what I'm going to do is I am going to add a medium, which in this case, I'm going to use a top coat. I would prefer to use Liquid Patina by DIY, but we were sold out for a while and we have gotten some new in stock. So it is available at vintagebdesign.com, but I personally haven't picked any up since we've gotten them in stock. So I'm gonna laugh at myself as I'm doing this very awkwardly. It makes so much more sense to lay the container down to do this. But the idea is that you want to wrap the decoupage paper around it and then be sure to put a um, top coat of your medium on as well. Oh, look, I figured it out finally. Yeah, so you really just want to, um, you, to get out all the wrinkles as many as you can. You are going to have some wrinkles. And to be honest, I actually like some wrinkles in it. I love the look of handmade and I don't want it to look machine made. So to me, brush strokes and little bit of lines and things like that are all part of it being a handmade piece. 
Once I know exactly how much I need, I cut it off, leaving a little bit on the edge so that I can sand it later. And I am gonna save this for the next container. Lucky, lucky me, this was actually exactly enough to do the next container. It lines up almost perfectly. So I'm just going through the exact same process. I did opt to lower my decoupage paper a little bit. You'll see on the first one, I actually sort of matched it up to the bottom and this time I have it more centered and that's because I love this big mum or chrysanthemum, or whatever this big flower is, it's so gorgeous. And so I wanna be sure that that is front and center on my container. And I also decided instead of painting with my medium the entire piece first that I would do a little bit and sort of move along. If you run out of paper, one of the things you can do is actually use some of the scraps like the butterflies or what have you and sort of piecemeal things together. I have done that on other projects as well. On my final third container, I am going to use some of the mulberry paper from Redesign with Prima. This um, paper is amazing. It is, um, it's, it feels, much more sturdy than paper. It seems like it's more of a fabric, really, um, like a net fabric. And it is the exact same process. Um, the only difference is you do need to make sure because this is folded in packaging, then you can kind of see the crease there is that you do need to tug on it a little bit when you're laying it down. But otherwise, the process is identical. It is just a really fantastic fabric. Once you have let everything dry, and I do mean dry, you want this to be fully dry, then it will be easy to remove the excess of both the Jamie Ray decoupage paper and this Prima um, more fabric decoupage paper. And I'm just cutting off the excess because I'll be able to use this later and it'll just make it easier for me. And then I'm gonna take some 220 sandpaper and literally just start sanding it. And just like paper, it will start to come right off. And on all of the different tins, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice distress on the top. And then I will add some clear wax as well. I believe I used fusion wax for this, but I, as I've said in other videos, I have my favorite waxes. We sell a lot of products. My favorite waxes are DIY wax. Um, it's probably my absolute favorite. And then any of the waxes that are made by Homestead House, which is anyone's made by Fusion and or Miss Mustard Seed, which are actually all made by Clapham's Wax. And so if you are using those, they're all super creamy. Sometimes I like the Miss Mustard Seed Wax because it comes in a lavender, but in this case, I used Fusion. It was what was on my shelf. After I'm done white waxing it, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of dark wax, and that is because the top felt really white for the little bit of umber that was in the paper. It was sort of an off way to creamier white. I rubbed on some dark wax and then wiped it right off. One good tip with dark wax is if you ever feel like your piece is too dark or there's areas that are too dark, you can always go back to the clear wax and use that as basically an eraser. This was definitely my favorite project of the day. If I had a place for these in my house, I might consider keeping them because I really love this Jamie Ray decoupage paper. This is probably my favorite paper. I just think it's stunning. What do you think? Um, do you like this makeover? Leave a comment below. And now we are ready for our third and final product. And once again, I have a nesting set. These used to have lids on them. I think that we took them out to staging the lids. I don't know what happened. Honestly, they never fit right anyway. And they're a little too country for what we use in staging. And the girls really never want to use them, which I can't blame them. It's not something I would pick if I were staging most houses either. I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Silk. And I love Silk for a project like this because you don't need a top coat. It is it has primer and top coat built in. It is two quick coats and you're ready to move on to the next step. What I'm going to do with each of these three containers. If you've learned nothing by watching my channel, then you probably know I love to layer stencils and transfers, and that's what I'm doing here. I am using one of CC Restyled 
uh, stencils, which is a larger one, and it's uh, produced by Prima. Of course, all the details are at vintagebdesign.com where you can order them. And uh, you'll notice something really unusual here. As a matter of fact, my husband heard me and came into the room and he said, are you pouncing? I know it's really unusual to hear me pounce, which uh, I've got the sound turned down so you can't hear me pounce, but he certainly could. And the reason I'm pouncing is I'm doing this on a round container. There is no way to swirl. You absolutely have to pounce and you'll see the texture is very, very different. You also could not completely fill in the blanks. This needs to be sort of a sparse stencil. Um, it's really gonna be more of a highlight in the background after I put the big transfers on, but I felt like leaving it just blue just wasn't enough. It needed to have something more than just a transfer. If you are enjoying the content that you've watched today, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell button so that you know whenever we post a new, I try to post a new video every Sunday, sometimes throughout the week as well. And now for the fun part of adding the transfers. So I have gone back to the watercolor bloom that I used in my last video with the teapot and I am using some of the bigger selections on these. I told you I get a lot of projects out of these $30 transfers. Um, so here's three more. Uh, I got what three out of it last time. So we're up to six projects. They really are a good value. I know they seem expensive when you buy them. They really can be a good value, especially ones like these where they have a lot of pieces that you can cut apart. And so I'm doing all this work to get ready for a um, vintage market that we have in Lakeland, Florida next weekend. And I'm wondering, should I sell these individually or would you sell them as a set if it were you. So leave a comment below and let me know if you think it would be better to sell these groups as individual items or as a set. I saw you from across the room When I rest met I never knew could feel this way and it's kind of strange don't even know your name it's like the crafting is the easy part this is the hard part why why is this so difficult it's not like i, I could speak on a stage in front of five thousand people and have no problem but to come up with something to say for these couple of minutes in these videos this is like pulling teeth That's a wrap, folks. I don't know what else to say. Bye.